What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's first video of 2022, we're going to be tackling another iOS interview question. We're sticking with the series since you guys seem to be liking it. Drop a like down below before we get started. Hit subscribe, you guys know the spiel, and let's jump straight into the question and write out the solution together. So I've got the question opened up on the left here. It's a little small, so I can go ahead and read it. So given a M by N 2D binary grid, which represents a map of ones, otherwise known as island, uh, rather, sorry, land, and zero, known as water, return the number of islands. So in other words, uh, the land represented by one is an island, and they go further into detail. An island is surrounded by water uh, and is formed by adjacent land horizontally or vertically. Note that it's not diagonally. You may assume that all four edges of the grid are surrounded by water. So they give you an example down here. If we look at this grid where we have a bunch of ones and zeros, we actually only have one island and we need to return one. Now, why is it one? Well, if you look at all the ones, they're all adjacent, either horizontally or vertically, to another one. In other words, this is one just giant island. So we need to look at all the neighbors for a particular position in our matrix here, in our grid, to figure out uh, you know, the entire amount uh, or all the slots that comprise up that island. We don't want to individually just count the ones because that would be a little trivial and defeat the purpose of this question. So before we start reasoning about the best way to approach this, let's at least do the easy part and write out our function. So we're going to say count islands. And this guy is going to take in a grid argument, which will be a 2D array of characters. It could also be a string. Let's make it a string where it'll be either a zero or a one. It could also be, of course, an integer, whatever floats your boat. I've seen it in all different fashions. And we're gonna return a integer here, which is going to be the number of islands. Now in our function, we're gonna wanna count the number of islands. So we're just gonna say number of islands that we find is zero, number of islands. And then in here, we wanna write our solution. Now, looking at this, it's pretty intuitive how you want to solve it, but figuring out the best way to implement it is kind of where it gets tricky without some you know, computer science related knowledge. So looking at it as a human, I know that I can just basically pick a random position. So if I pick the zero here, obviously it's not an island, not a one. But if I pick this one here, I know that it's an island, right? It's at least part of an island. And I can look left, up, right, and down to see the adjacency of another one. And I can group all of them visually together, right? These six ones, then we got two more ones, there's a one here, all the stuff at the bottom is a zero. So we have all these ones touching each other, therefore it is one ginormous island. So we would say, okay, we've got one island. And one important thing that you'll notice that I did there intuitively, just as a human looking at this, is we kind of took those out of the equation. So if I come down to this next row, we don't want to duplicate uh, count, doubly count another one that is already included in a prior island. So I get to column four here and row two, and I see this one, but I can already see it's a part of this larger island. So I'm just going to ignore it and move on and then move all the way to the bottom right of our grid. So what we want to do is not only iterate through our grid here, but we also want to somehow keep track of a one if we found it as a neighbor of a given point on an island if we've counted it already so we don't doubly count. Now the best way to do this is to first start at least iterating through our island and then we'll figure out how to you know not doubly count stuff. So we already have our number of islands defined up here. We're going to create a mutable version of our grid that's passed in. So I'm going to go ahead and call it our matrix which will be grid. Make sure it's a var so we can uh, change values in there as we're going to need to momentarily and let's go ahead and loop through our actual uh, grid so we're going to say for i in zero uh, up until matrix dot count which will give us basically every single row we're going to get a row which is going to be in our matrix a thing at i pretty simple and then we're going to say for j in zero up until row dot count which will give us basically the column position and then we can get the value at said position in our uh, matrix, which will be the thing at i and j. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say if the value that we have here is a 1, we want to do something. That first thing that we want to go ahead and do is increment our number of islands. All right, pretty simple. We're going to say plus equals 1. And, you know, 
the naive thing to do here would be to say, okay, we're done. We're counting the number of islands. However, like we like we saw, if we continue down this and we find a one here and then we find other ones, we're going to doubly count. And just to show that in action that the solution isn't fully good to go yet, let's go ahead and actually uh, call this function. So we're going to say count to islands. I'm going to create a grid up above momentarily. And we're going to say our results down here is going to be a result. I'm also going to add a few line breaks so it separates it in our console. And let's create a grid here. We'll say grid is going to be the following. So we're going to say one, one, one. And let me just go ahead and copy and paste these ones a few times. All right, we've got ones below there, there. I'm going to stick a zero here. We're going to stick a one here a one there and let's see what else we want to do now this is a single dimension array so don't forget you want this to be a 2d array so we're going to stick all of these within um, array brackets themselves all right let's make sure i did this example case correctly we'll put that there and there and there and by just visually looking at this you can see that all of these ones are adjacent we probably want to add a couple more zeros for the sake of this example i'll make this bottom one all zeros and I'll stick some more zeros inside of here. We want this to be an even sized grid. Doesn't have to be equal in height and length, but it should be even M by N. All right, looking good. And finally, looking good, looking good. So we're gonna go ahead and call this and we expect to see one island since all these ones are touching each other uh, more or less, but you'll see in a second here, as soon as my playground decides to pause and run again, that we don't actually get that out. What we get is 11, and that makes sense, right? We're doing two for loops, and whenever we find a one, we say, hey, bump our number of islands. That is not quite correct. So what we're gonna now want to do is every time we find a part of an island or a one, we're gonna want to call a depth first search function, which is basically a fancier way of saying, hey, look at all your neighbors continuously until you find something that's not a one, and then you can stop. So we're going to call this depth first search, otherwise known as DFS. And it's pretty simple to implement. It sounds a little scarier than it actually is if you're not familiar. So we're going to go ahead and call a function called search. This search is going to take in three arguments, first one being a row, second one being a column, and the third one being our grid, which should be a mutable uh, copy of our grid, or rather just a mutable pointer of our grid, so it's going to be our 2D array, and it's not going to return anything for this function signature. Now, what do we want to actually do in here? Well, we want to update value to be a zero. We want to search all neighbors and we want to verify base case since we're going to recursively call this function. Now, what are we actually doing in all these steps? Let's go through them one by one and write the implementation out. So verifying our base case, well, we wanna make sure our row and column that we're calling with are within the boundary of our matrix, our grid. So we're gonna verify that. And we're also gonna verify that the thing at the row and column in the grid is a one because we only wanna to continue to search all of our neighbors if we're at a one. So let's do that before we talk about the next step. So we're gonna say guard that the row is greater than or equal to zero, that the row is less than grid.count. We wanna verify that the column is greater than or equal to zero, and that the column is less than in our grid, the first row.count, which will basically give us the number of columns. If we are not within these boundaries, we don't wanna continue, we're basically done. The other thing we're gonna verify, I'm gonna break these out so we can see them a little better here. Let's go ahead and let me actually write it as another statement. We're gonna also say guard that the thing in our grid at the given row and column is a one. Uh, we don't wanna continue if it's zero. If we found a zero, we're basically outside of the boundary of the island that we started at, so we're done. We don't wanna recurse anymore. So if we, if we verify the thing is a one at this position, we can continue, otherwise we're also done. Now we get to the interesting part, and this is a little bit of intuition. If you think about it, whenever we find a one for an adjacent island, we can just flip it to a zero. And that way, when our above for loop that's iterating through this matrix gets to that position, it'll see a zero and it won't kick off this uh, search. So what we're more or less going to do here is we're gonna say grid at row and column, go ahead and just assign it to a zero. We know that it's a one already since we did the check up here, 
So we're going to say, hey, just flip yourself to a zero. And then finally, explore all your neighbors and keep doing this recursively until you hit one of the base cases and you stop. So how do we explore all the neighbors? Well, it's pretty trivial, actually. So we're going to call this search function again. We're going to explore one to the right, uh, rather one down, which is going to be a row plus one, passing in the same column and a mutable pointer of our grid. And I'm going to copy and paste this a few more times. We're going to explore the previous row. Now keep in mind, a row is zero, we'll end up in negative one, but we're guarding against that as one of our base cases. Similarly, we want to increment and decrement the column. So we're going to say plus one for the column and minus one so we can explore left and right of the given position that we start at. And by doing this, we're basically done. So the fact that we have this function now here, this will take care of all of our adjacency and we want to make sure we don't forget to call it. We're going to say go ahead and search at i and j and we're going to pass in our mutable version of our grid, which is why we created the mutable matrix right up here. We're going to say matrix like that. And let's go ahead and give this a run one more time and let's see what output we get. So we're going to pause our playground. We go down to where our test code is. Right, let's go ahead and give this a run just like that. I believe we have one island, which in fact is what we get out. These are all ones, they're all adjacent. These are adjacent vertically as well as these. Let's try another example in here. Let's make it a little uh, simpler, but with some more islands. So we're going to say zero, one, and let me throw this in some brackets like so. Let me go ahead and copy and paste this three times or four times. We actually have two islands in here, one vertical here, one vertical here. And what I can actually also go ahead and do is let's make all of these zeros and zeros. Let's make this guy a one. So we have one island here and then we have two vertical islands there and we expect to see our output be three if I'm not mistaken. So let's go ahead and hit pause. Let's go ahead and run it again and we get a result of three. So there you have it. That's how you can count all of the islands, otherwise represented as ones, in this two-dimensional array, this matrix. Just to review, we basically just do a loop over all the rows and columns, and at every position, if we find the start of an island or a piece of an island, it doesn't even have to be a start, quote-unquote, we start a search, and we say, go ahead and recursively search all the neighbors where a neighbor has a value of one. Because if it has a value of one, we know it's a part of that same island we're going to flip it to a zero so when we get there in our for loop we don't uh, start doubly counting it otherwise we end up with an incorrect output and then explore all of your neighbors and then again we have our base cases for our boundary check up here and we are good to go let's talk about the time complexity and space complexity so the time of this is uh, big o of m by n where m and n are the size of the matrix that is passed in, the row and column. Where did I get the actual m and n variables from? Well, it's from our actual input problem statement here, since our grid is represented by m by n. And space is basically the same thing, since we are going to be, at most, calling our recursive search function down there by m times n. And in which case will that actually happen? Well, imagine if we passed in a, a grid where everything is a one. So at this first value, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to recursively call that search method to check all the neighbors for every other uh, slot in here until we get basically down here where everything will be flipped to a zero. Then we're going to continue our for loop iteration, get to the end, and we'll say, well, we have one island, so we're good to go. So there you have it. That's all I've got for you guys today. Pretty commonly asked interview question. Uh, definitely asked by Google, Snap, Netflix, absolutely, and lots of other pretty interesting companies out there. Let me know if you have any questions down below. Let me know if you caught any bugs or any optimizations that I missed covering here. If you haven't done so already, drop a like, hit subscribe. Something like 70% of you watch consistently but haven't subscribed. Try to get to 50,000 subs as quickly as we can in the beginning of this new year. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.